So I have to ask the question, are fragrance oils actually safe? And the reason I have to ask is this, because we all do it. Armitage Candle Company, the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making business and technique. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about the safety of fragrance oils. Like, are these things actually safe to use? Because we've all been just adding it at will, or maybe we've swapped to essential oils completely. But the ultimate question is like, are we putting safe things into our candles? Because when we sell them or we use them or we burn them, can we trust that that's okay? Are we just taking this for granted? Well, we're going to skim the surface of this topic because it can be a little bit controversial. There's a lot to it. And specifically, we're going to talk about when you buy fragrance oil, if you're a candle maker or a soap maker even, when you buy fragrance oil, how do you know that this oil is okay to use? Now, when you go to the store and you buy a fragrance oil, you're going to see that almost every supplier is going to issue an IFRA certificate or an IFRA certificate. IFRA stands for the International Fragrance association and they're worldwide and what they do is a lot of science and a lot of publication and a lot of writing about fragrance oil and specifically fragrance or perfumes they guide the cosmetics industry in a lot of ways and the ifra has a scientific arm called the rifm and there's just a lot of acronyms involved but the point is this they have provided to the fragrance industry a template a standard if you will for everyone to follow if you're selling fragrance oil to tell that person or that company, what is this fragrance oil okay to be used on? IFRA certificates help answer the question, what's in this fragrance oil, by forcing the fragrance oil suppliers to tell you what you're allowed to use it for in a particular application. For instance, a fragrance oil may specifically say that you can only use this up to 2% in a lotion, but in a candle, you can use 100% of it. Now, this percentage is the concentration. If you're a candle maker, you may recognize this as the fragrance load. Now, soaps and other cosmetic items, they have a similar idea. If you're adding fragrance oil, there's a certain amount that you can use without being harmful to the consumer. Now, the percentage that the certificate tells you you can use is not the design percentage. For instance, if you wanna make a candle with an 8% fragrance load and your certificate says 90% or 100%, that doesn't mean you need to use 90% or 100%. The 90 or 100% in that certificate is actually the threshold, the maximum amount of, that you would ever wanna use in the candle. So 8%, since it's less than 90, since it's less than 100, is okay to use. IFRA certificates matter because they give a little more transparency to the candle maker about what's going on with that fragrance oil. Now, if you're making soap or if you're making lotion or lip balm, whatever it is, and you're adding fragrance and you're buying oil to do that, this helps you understand whether it's safe to use that in your application. Application being candle soap or lip balm. Candle maker suppliers, those who sell fragrance oil, don't actually get their certificate from the IFRA. The IFRA actually just provides a template for the certificate. In order to get that certificate created, the supplier has to go to some approved laboratory research science place, send them their fragrance oil, and have them come back and tell them that this meets certain thresholds in the different categories listed on that certificate. So if you're buying fragrance oil from a supplier and they don't have an IFRA certificate, you should think about that because depending on what you're doing, that fragrance oil might not actually be safe for your application. Here's the good news if you're a candle maker. Almost every single fragrance oil that I've ever seen has an allowance of 100% for candles. Why is this? Well, in the theory used to generate that safety criteria, the fact that it's non-contact in the air only has been identified as okay to just use as much as you want. So candle makers generally don't need to care about that percentage. Now, if you're making soap where your hands are in contact with it, or if you're making lip balm where you're actually applying it to your face or lotion or something that you rinse off or even keep on well that could be a different story and that's where you see some of these fragrance oils have limits you may have seen on some suppliers websites that 
it says it's not okay for skin contact applications. That's because when they sent that fragrance oil into the science arm to evaluate it and to generate a certificate for them, the science arm said compared to the standards of today, this is not safe above this percent concentration. And those standards are laid out by smart people, we assume, in the IFRA research arm, RIFM. And as far as what happens after that, it's not the law, but different places, different companies, different countries may react differently and say, yes, we need to follow this, or they may ignore it. Whatever it is, it's on them. But the certificate tells you, the buyer of the oil, whether or not that is approved by the current standards laid out by the RIFM. So the point that you need to care about is this. The IFRA certificate tells the artisan, you and me, how to integrate that fragrance oil safely without using too much for your application. And here's the double good news. If you are an artisan or if you're making, you're consuming this fragrance oil in your application, you don't have to provide a certificate to you, who you're selling it to. The one exception would be wholesale or something special where the circumstances dictate that they've asked you to do that. This is for primarily the sellers of the oil, not the final product. Now the format of the IFRA certificate changes every so often as new standards are released. The most recent one as of this video came out in December 2019, amendment number 48. What you have to care about is it changes the different categories listed on that certificate. The category in this case refers to the application of that product. If you're using the fragrance oil in a reed diffuser, for example, you'll check category 10 of your certificate and it'll tell you what the allowed percentage allowed load of that fragrance oil is for reed diffusers if you're making candles for example and you want to check what the allowed percentage is you'll look under category 12 in the previous amendment this was category 11 which is actually a pretty big shift so if you're an artisan there's really just two steps that you need to take first check which year or which amendment that if a certificate was generated in if it doesn't have category 12, it's likely older. If it does, it's likely amendment 49 or beyond. The second step then is to check your category for what you're making. If you're making candles, that'll be category 12. If you're making reed diffusers, then check a different category. If you're making anything else, check the right category. I'll leave a link below to the current standards that I have as of this video. So maybe the question on your mind now is this. Do you have to follow the IFRA certificate if you're a maker? Now, the answer technically is no. And unless you're a member of the IFRA, you actually don't have to. However, just like with industry standard testing, following the guidelines on the IFRA certificates is also an industry standard. So if something happens or there's an allergy or someone reaches out to you and it's found out that you didn't follow it, then that could be a problem. I'm not suggesting anything one way or another, but it's best practice. Good news, if you're a candle maker, likely you don't have to care that much, but you should still check it out, if not for educational purposes. And the last note is this. Commonly, we go around and we say a fragrance load of 6 to 10% is all you need with fragrance oil. Well, here's the thing. A lot of the fragrance oil that we buy is purposed by suppliers to meet a variety of different applications, meaning it's in the supplier's interest to build a fragrance oil that they can sell to candle makers, soap makers, lotion makers, lip balm makers, and so on, meaning that they kind of dilute some supplies to hit those different safety thresholds so that it has universal appeal. If you wanna get a very good fragrance oil for just candles, you wanna find a supplier or an oil that was manufactured as such. Likely, you won't find one that universally applies to every application and instead applies to candles, in which case we're talking about an ability for that oil to deliver on much lower concentrations because it isn't diluted to appeal to mass application. I hope that makes sense. There's so much we can peel back on the fragrance industry as far as what's safe, what's not. Is IFRA a good thing? Is the RIFM doing a great job? And that, honestly, I'm not sure. There's so much to learn and it's hard to stand on one thing. But one thing we can say is this, the IFRA is doing work in the fragrance industry to help bring things to light, to help bring in transparency without compromising the trade secrets that some companies find very important. Now, it is certainly a balance and we should always 
ask for more transparency, especially when human health and pet health is involved. So with that being said, that's all I have for you. I hope some of this was interesting, educational, entertaining, whatever. I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful, safe, IFRA certificate appealing candles. And I will see you in the next episode. 